have the January 6th unselect committee of political hacks and thugs. And it's the — think of this. These are hacks and thugs. These are the same people that we've been dealing with for four years, same people. And it's the very people who perpetrated the lies that I was an agent of Russia, like Adam Shifty Schiff and others who are standing before the same microphone, same thing they get out, and they say, oh, our country is suffering so badly because — and he knows the whole thing is a hoax. I said this the other day. He knew Russia, Russia was a hoax. Him, Hillary Clinton, the DNC, the Democrats. And he stood pompously before microphone. His head, as you know, I feel, is shaped like a watermelon. <laughs> He's a quite an unattractive man. Now, see, they'll get me in trouble for that, Kellyanne, because by saying he's unattractive, they'll say, that's a horrible thing to say. But he said slightly worse about me. But think of this. He knows it's a hoax. He goes, not a stupid person, an evil person, a sick person, in my opinion, but he goes before these same microphones, and he said, President Donald Trump's son, Don Jr., will go to prison for what he's done with Russia. What kind of a man would say that my son will put yourself in my son's position, that he's going to prison on something that he doesn't even know about, and that Adam Schiff knows is a hoax and a fairy tale and was made up? And the New York Times, Brett Stevens did a piece on it the other day. They admit now that it was a totally made up hoax. He's saying my son should go to prison and he knows it was a hoax. What kind of a human being can do that? Only a sick, evil, very bad human being. And now I have the same people there, the same people, other than Janie, who's the worst, and uh, crying Adam Kinsinger. I watched him today. He's, oh. I mean, these people are just, you know. But the same basic people are now going on this. And it's so unfair when you see what happened to BLM, when you see what happened to Antifa, when you see what happened to all of the killing, all of the killings that took place all over the country, and then what you see what they're doing to people that in some cases didn't even enter the building, and you see the way they're being tortured and handled so horribly, when you see Kamala Harris getting people out on bail that burned down buildings and killed people and getting them out on bail, and you can't even get many of these people out on bail. What a sad thing. And something's going to have to happen, because people are not going to take it much longer. There's two sets of justice, and we don't have to go into it, but nobody's ever seen what's happening today in our country. And they're doing the exact same thing with January 6th as they did with all these previous assaults in our country. So where does it stop? Where does it end? It probably doesn't stop, because despite great outside dangers, our biggest threat in this country remains the sick, sinister, and evil people from within. These are evil people. Crazy Nancy Pelosi. She impeached me twice only because she had enough votes. And the Democrats do stick together, even though they don't agree with it, because they're afraid not to. She impeached me twice, but the Republicans stuck together also, so I'm honored that they did. But think of how sick that is. I got impeached over a phone call. Congratulations on your win. Trump gets impeached. I mean, this is a, just a crazy time. Never forget, everything this corrupt establishment is doing to me is all about preserving their power and control over the American people. They want to damage you in any form, but they really want to damage me so I can no longer go back to work for you. And I don't think that's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's very nice.
Now, it's a, it's a very sad thing. Who else could have taken this? You know, think of it. Nixon went through not even one impeachment. And I think he always regretted that he didn't fight. But uh, people, uh, it's been a very interesting period of time. And to me, they say a very successful man came up to me and said, could I ask you a question? One of the most successful. Could I ask you a question? Yeah, what? How do you take it? How do you get up in the morning? I say, do I have a choice, right? <laughs>